These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. Well, let's try balancing this equation. Okay, so he has any idea about how we would go about balancing this, or should we go through that together? Uh, can we go through it together? Okay. Well, now, what does it mean to be, well, is the equation balanced yet? How can we tell whether it's balanced yet? It's not, for example, there's two nitrogen atoms on the left and only one nitrogen atom on the right. So it's not balanced yet. We have conservation of elements. If we start with two nitrogens, we have to end with two nitrogens. Or if we start with three hydrogens, we have to end with three hydrogens. The elements are not going to change identity in these chemical equations. Uh, you can only change your identity in a nuclear reaction, but we're not doing nuclear chemistry, we're doing regular chemistry. So regular chemistry elements don't change their identities. All right, uh, the best way to uh, balance the elements here is um, we should identify an element that appears in, um, in the fewest number of places. An element that appears in the, in the fewest number of places. In this case, I don't think it matters whether we start with the nitrogen or the hydrogen. So I'll start with the, the nitrogen, and I'm just going to arbitrarily say that we have one nitrogen. Now normally when there's only one of thing, we don't even include the number. But it's actually a very helpful technique when you're balancing equations to write down the number one when you've assigned it. That shows us that there's a difference between this and this. Here I haven't assigned a number yet, and here I have assigned a number. So we should write down the number one. All right, now what's the next number that we can determine? Well now we can determine what this number has to be. What does this number have to be? Two. Two. Because I've decided that this is going to be one. So I need two nitrogens on the left and two nitrogens on the right. Well, now there's only one number left to determine. What's this number going to be? Any suggestions for what that should be? One. Now here we have to decide how many hydrogens we need here. Well, how many hydrogens do we now have on the right? Maybe one and a half, right? Uh, we have three. Uh, let's see. So we have two moles of NH3. Six. Six, right? So there's three hydrogens in each ammonia, but we have two ammonias. That's what the advantage is of having written down this number two. So what did we decide? Six hydrogens over here? So we need, yeah, we need six hydrogens over here in total, so now I'll put the number three down here. And the reason I didn't write the numbers up here yet is that these were kind of tentative. But now that I've got all the numbers, I can say, yeah, these are my final numbers. One, three, and two. So basically you start with um, the one that you assigned, and it's not arbitrary because you said to assign the one with, and that occurs in the least amount of places. Right. But um, and then that just directs everything else. Yeah, the that's right. So you pick it, try to pick an element that appears in the fewest number of places and assign that a convenient number, which might be one, which is the simplest number. Uh, and then once you've assigned that number, hopefully that will let you assign another number. And you have to be just strategic about that. So I started by assigning this number, and then I just it, I had to realize that it didn't make sense to now try to get this number, because this is about hydrogens and this is about nitrogens. Instead, I should try to focus on another nitrogen number. So I had to get this one, and once I figured out this number, then there was only one number left to figure out. Okay, So that's the most efficient way to balance uh, equations. And they're probably not going to give you a case that's super hard on the test. So this is, this is a technique that should generally work. Um, now, it was arbitrary here that I started with the nitrogen. Let's start by assigning a number to this compound first, because this also appears in only one place, in the left and the right. Well, what would be a simple number that I could apply to this hydrogen? One. Yeah. Now, what's the next number that would be convenient to figure out? Uh, hydrogen on the left. Yeah, now this one is going to be trickier. Um, but if we have two hydrogens here, what coefficient do I need here to get two hydrogens on the right? That's trickier. 
might need to work out that calculation on paper. What number should I put here so there's two hydrogens on the right like there's two hydrogens on the left? So you might work this out like this. So far, we don't know what this should be. So we can yeah. call this x. But if this is x, what would be the total number of hydrogens on the right? Well, if this is x, then the total number on the right would be 3x. And how many do we want to have on the right? Two. To balance this. So what does x have to be? 0.66. Yeah, or we're going to stick with fractions. So this would be? 2 thirds. 2 thirds. So now we figured out that this coefficient should be 2 thirds. All right, so you can work this out algebraically, doing a little bit of algebra. And that's why I said you might have to work this out on paper. Although you can kind of work this out in your head. You might say, it's pretty clear I'm going to need a fraction here. And I need a fraction that's going to cancel out this 3. Well, if I put a 3 on the bottom, this will cancel the 3 on the top. And then I can put whatever number I want on the, on the top here. So that's how you can work this out without the algebra. So after you've done a bunch of these, you don't always need the algebra. Oh, but maybe the algebra is less confusing. Um, so again, if you put in the number x, x times 3 is equal to 2 is the, is the result we would get here. Um, okay, um, and uh, this is getting a little confusing now, but uh, now I have to figure out this number. One third. One third? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Because we have got two thirds of a nitrogen on the right, and one third times two is two thirds of a nitrogen on the left as well. Okay, so now we would have a balanced equation. So we could write this as one third, one and two thirds. Now there's no paradox about that. Because what are the units on these numbers? A lot of people don't know what the units are on the stoichiometric coefficients. The units are moles. This stands for this. This means that if we take one mole of nitrogen gas and combine it with three moles of hydrogen gas, we can produce two moles of ammonia. Well, is it possible to have a fraction of a mole? Absolutely. Remember that a mole is just a huge number. It's um, the example that chemists usually use is it's like the word dozen. Dozen is just a name for a number. Well, mole is just a name for a bigger number. So there's nothing paradoxical about having one-third of a mole, just like when you have one-third of a dozen or half of a dozen. Um, a mole is what, like 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, a big number, so you can certainly have one-third of this. So now we know that if we took a third of a mole of nitrogen gas and combined it with one mole of hydrogen gas, we would end up with two-thirds of a mole of ammonia gas. Uh, even though this makes sense, it's not necessarily going to be the most convenient thing for solving the problem. And in the choices, they usually use integer coefficients. So how can we make all of these coefficients into integers? What could we do to these coefficients to make all of them into integers? Well, this is like a, a, uh, a mathematical equation. So you can multiply everything on the left by a number if you multiply everything on the right by that number. What would be a good number to multiply by here? Three. Yeah. That will get rid of our denominators. So if I multiply this by three, I would get one. If I multiply this by three, I'd get three. And what do I get here? Yeah, there we go. OK. Uh, that gets us back to what we got up here, right? Yeah. So of course, these are the same equations, so they have to end up with the same uh, stoichiometric coefficients. OK. Um, so uh, in both cases, we just picked arbitrarily an element to start with, one that appeared not very often. It turned out that we didn't luck out in this case because we got the fractional coefficients. Maybe if I would started this way on the test, I would maybe give up and see if it was easier to start with the nitrogen so I didn't have to work with the fractional coefficients. Uh, but even if you do, but if you do get fractions, it's possible to work through them. You can also answer it using the fractions. And then it's usually convenient to get rid of the fractions at the end. How do you get rid of fractions? By multiplying by the denominator. That's why I always put the original coefficients down below, because they're kind of provisional. I might want to readjust them to get rid of any fractions that pop up. So I put these down below originally to show that I might want to get rid of them eventually to, uh, by multiplying by the denominator. All right, and that's how you, uh, that's how you balance an equation. So that technique should work for pretty much anything you'll see on this test. Now, it's possible you might see a question that just asks you to balance an equation. But more likely is that you'll need to balance the equation as part of a larger problem. You can't use a chemical equation until it's balanced. So this is an important skill, even if the problem doesn't seem to be directly about that. 